Let me just tell you, if you look around, players, look at our former players in our circle. It's something. It's something special to wear that logo on the side of the only Razorback in the country. There's only one Razorback. There's only one. And you have to work to wear it. Nobody's giving it to you. You're not entitled to it. Once you're a player here, you're always a player here. These guys behind you and their families are where they are today because of the sweat on this football field. Am I right, men? Yes, sir. Because of the sweat on this football field and the sacrifice and the crying and the, and the laughing in that locker room and the bleeding and the ups and the downs. A lot of lessons learned on this football field, more than just football, man. This is a unique group. This is a special group. And when you're in, you're in. And you're represented to the utmost to our standard, which is what? Yes. Our standard's best. Portland State at Arkansas, 4 p.m. on SEC Network. Just one thing is. I want to see how efficient this system is now with a quarterback that's actually been there, right? Ben Hicks has been Good. in the system. Look, when you throw for as many yards as he's thrown for, I mean, the guy's thrown for 71 touchdowns and 9,000 yards, two years in this system. How efficient is it? Last year, it was as inefficient as you could be, yep. PB. When you throw for more interceptions than you do touchdowns, that's an issue. So right now, it'll be very interesting to see Ben Hicks in the mix. How fast will this become an efficient offense? And this is crazy, right? There's not one starter for 2019 Arkansas offense that started in 2018. A complete new look yeah. for Chad Morris Razorbacks. Let's talk about Arkansas. You're going to the game tomorrow. You, I mean, yeah. you, you, you don't mind flying halfway across the world on, on a rare day off to yeah. go to an Arkansas football game. I am supposed to be on vacation this week, so I wasn't doing my radio show, and I went to Ireland. Never been to Ireland before. I went by myself. I didn't even have anywhere to go, and I like got online. I did that 23andMe, and it was like, you're Irish. So I flew over to Ireland, and I'm, I'm walking down the street, like, are you my cousin? And I wasn't related to anybody out there. And so I go, and I spent like three days. It was fine. But I was like, I got to go to the first game. So I text Coach Morris, and I was like, I'm a big Chad Morris guy. And I was like, Coach, I'm coming to the game. So he invited me to go walk the team through tomorrow before the game. So I got my helmet, I got my pride, and I'm going to go tomorrow and, and, and watch Arkansas. I'm pretty excited. And I know that, you know, they're only thinking five or six wins, and I think a bowl game would be good for us this year, but I'm really seeing the program turn itself around. I mean, you, you're an incredibly busy guy. You, you do comedy uh, almost every weekend uh, all over the country. You, you do, I've already established all the things you do at ABC. Um, how closely and how intensely do you follow Arkansas sports? As intensely as you can. I mean, it's what I grew up doing. It's, you know, if you have hobbies, one of mine is Arkansas football, basketball, and baseball. I went to the College World Series this year. I did the same thing. Took a day off, there. flew up, went, and uh, we lost. But it was just fun. As a kid from Arkansas, I grew up in a town of 700 kids, 700 people. So, you know, you, we could barely afford to go to games as a kid unless, like, the church took us. Right. So for me, it was always a thrill to get to go. But we, I watched every game. You know, I, I, for the baseball team, I even, you know, kept the box scores at home. So I'm a diehard Arkansas fan. I'm a diehard SEC fan. So, you know, Arkansas first and then, you know, the SEC second. And if I remember, uh, you, you dabbled in... What we do here is Sports Talk Radio. At one I point, did didn't for, you? for a few years. I did a national show on Fox Sports, and so yeah, I did. I loved it. And they were like, "Hey, do you want to do more?" And I, I didn't. It's, I, it's a hobby. <laughs> I didn't. I was kind of, I was done. But I, you know, I do it for fun, and I always love doing this show. Do you know this is my own? Because they, they were like, "Hey, do you want to go on Paul's show?" And I was like, "I do. I love Paul. This is the only show and only appearance that I've ever been on where I really felt like I bombed an appearance." <sighs> This, of all the shows, like what, I'm a pretty what they, good. What do they say? Gentlemen never tell. No, I'm a pretty good guest. Like I, because I do this. Well, and I, and I tell you the problem, uh, and you know, I have a reputation as an interviewer, and, and I'm not just saying this. I was just so excited because I, I felt like I was early, or early, in early on your career, and so I just tried to make everything hilarious. As you, I mean, you interview the biggest names in country music every day, and you know what I'm talking about. Sometimes Carrie Underwood is not that entertaining, is she? Uh, yes, every time, every okay, time maybe Carrie Underwood was entertaining. <laughs> Here's what happened. I would like to say that we, I came on your show, and I thought I was doing a two-minute segment. And they were like, you're going to go on for two minutes. And so I was given 
an intense two minutes. And it kept going. And I was like, oh, it was a 12-minute segment. I read well, it wrong. So I kind of went full in and I had nothing to say yeah, after no. about three minutes. So I'd like to apologize to all of your Fine Bomb listeners. It wasn't my best look. No, but listen, it, it, that's why I was so excited. When they told me, I mean, I, we have a, we've had a lot of big time people, but when I heard, and, and I'm just kind of a weird geeky guy, I just, I see you and I, I'm just so happy. I don't know you that well, but I'm just so proud because people don't, well, a lot of people do realize the success you've had. It's, it's pretty enormous and you're still, what, 18 years old? Yeah, I just turned 19 today. <laughs> Thank you. I think there's kind of a camaraderie in, in geeks, you know? That's so, uh, but you know, with football season starting back, I, I'm as pumped as you are. Like for me, college football is my favorite part of sports, going to games. I was talking to you before. When it gets cold, though, I'm a little too old now to go to cold games anymore. If it's below about 60, like I'm kind of out. You're an Arkansas fan. That's not a good thing to do. And so, yeah, I know. And so, but I only have a few weekends. I'm going to go watch them uh, tomorrow when it's warm. And then the rest of the time, probably I'll watch them on TV. So you're, you're, you're doing a comedy gig somewhere in America, yeah. in, in some town on a Saturday night. Are you, I mean, it, there's only so much you can do while you're on stage, but are you keeping up with the games when you're about to go on? Yeah, once in St. Louis, uh, it was a really close game between uh, Arkansas and Auburn, and I think there was three minutes left in the fourth, and I was about to go into a theater in St. Louis and play. And I walk out and give my opening act a little note, and I said, you got to extend for like 20 minutes. <laughs> I didn't go on because I wanted to see how the game ended. But I also will have respect, too, because I'll, I'll, I'll tour during basketball season as well. And I was in Raleigh doing a show once, and Duke and North Carolina were playing, and it had gone into overtime. And I knew that most of those people out there in the theater, you know, there are 3,000 people out there all on their phones. So I've also not went on for just the respect of them because I knew they wanted to watch the game. So I fully Axel rose them, came on like an hour <laughs> late. And I I'm not late anywhere. I came on like an hour late. And I was like, guys, you know I was thinking about you right now. And, I, you know, sports to me is a real big part of who I am. And so I understand, you know, other people that grow up with the same passions. And so I'll do that for my team, but I'll also do that if it's important to other people on their teams too. I'm, I'm curious because we, we don't get a chance to talk to too many country music people, but occasionally they'll come on. I think Justin Moore not long ago had a, a, had a new uh, record out. When, when you converse, because there's so many SEC fans or, and college football fans in that, in that slot, what, what's it like? I think that, you know, a lot of the guys and girls that sing country music are from, you know, the southeastern part of America. And so, you know, you bring up Carrie. Now, she's from Oklahoma, but right. it's all of that Texas, Oklahoma, and to the east sure. for the most part. So, you know, you got Luke, Luke Bryan, and, and Thomas Red and Al Dean. Those are all Georgia boys, you know, and they run in their tight little pack. Uh, you know, Darius is South Carolina. Right. And so you, there's an instant camaraderie with, first of all, college football fans anyway. But especially in country music, because a lot of us are from and root for each other when we're not playing each other. So there's always something to talk about during football season. Because you grow up in the South, you're going to have a team for the most part that you love, because college football is our sport. And you work with Ryan Seacrest, who went to Georgia. I don't know how long he stayed there, but he went. Yeah. Uh, uh, Ryan's, Ryan's the best. He's a Georgia, people forget he's a Georgia kid, too. Yeah. And so we don't talk about football, though. This is Ryan and I's conversation, because we do American Idol together. and. Obviously, he's hosting the show, and I'm back with the contestants. I love Ryan, and we'll see each other a few times during the show, and we'll talk. We're both very busy because he's got 500 jobs. I've got 300 jobs, so I'm just a little <laughs> less. He's far richer than I am, but you know, we'll talk, and you know, he'll say, all right, so how did you do your countdown this week? And I'd be like, well, I went to this studio and did it here. And it's when, when are you flying home? I was like, I'm leaving here on the red eye. And he's like, me too, I'm going. So we compare notes on how to get places and do shows efficiently. I'm interested before we go, because you, you are running a million miles an hour. And, and if you were only doing the country music thing, you would be a tremendous success. I mean, that's a killer program. And, it, and it's, 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 it represents the heartbeat of this industry here in Nashville. But you're doing all these other things. Uh, I mean, how do you keep up with your life? Well, I don't have a girlfriend or a wife or kids, and okay. I would like them, and I think this has been a, uh, a reason why. Um, I, I got a new therapist next week. I'm going to go to and talk about it with her. I called her up. I was like, I need a new therapist. So I think not having the really important things in life 
have kept me focused on these things. I'll be honest. That's uh, I wish I, I'm on I the mean, dating apps. I'm trying. I mean, it, it, I, I, don't, I don't want to sound like your dad, but, but here you are. You're, you're, you're a multi-zillionaire, and I don't have time for a girlfriend or friend. I mean, you, 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 you went to Ireland alone. I know. How sad is that? I mean, I don't know. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm worried about you. I don't even drink, and, and I don't know anything about Ireland, but Ireland is basically the Arkansas Ireland. part of Europe. I mean, like, you go there to play golf. You go there to drink. Right. Don't really play golf anymore. Too busy. Don't drink. Never drink. So I go, and it's like you're taking somebody who's lactose intolerant to like a cheese factory. They're like, look at all the cheeses. And I'm like, I can have none of them. So I basically walked, this is what I did, but I walked around Ireland, looked at a couple street musicians, and wrote some motivational speeches that I'm doing later this year. I did that this year. I, I'd never been to the Grand Canyon. Um, so my wife and I were out there, and I said, I'm going. And the weather was terrible. This was like Memorial Day weekend. But we got there, and there was a blizzard. So we fi it finally cleared long enough. I said, and it was like the Chevy Chase movie. I saw it. Let's get out of here. I mean, I, the, I feel the same way. Like, I, if I, I can look at it on Google Images, I'm pretty good. Like, just seeing stuff. They were, like, you, you they were like, you should go see the cliffs some more. And I'm like, I don't even, I've seen cliffs. I've jumped off cliffs. I'm from Arkansas. So I didn't take, I went and looked at a castle. It was like 15 minutes out of Dublin. Felt like I was on Game of Thrones for a second. And then, peaced out. But. In, in terms of your greatest memories in life. Yeah. I'm going to tell you I, easily. Uh, Matt Jones to DeCorey Birmingham in the end zone at Arkansas. We won the game. And I ran on the field. almost broke my leg. I jumped off. Of, you're not, by the way, don't, don't, never go on a field. It, they should have they tasered me. Like, they should have taken me down. You sure they didn't? I, I don't think so. Maybe I'm feeling the effects at this point. I jump on the field. You know the tarp they roll? The, you know, in case there's bad weather, uh, and I hit it and fall. I'm dragging my leg, but we're celebrating. It's the, one of the greatest memories, maybe if not the greatest. Well, one of mine uh, involves you. I, I, two, about two or three years ago, I, don't know, I, was, I was here for something. Don't even remember what. I ran to a guy in the, in the, in the industry. He said, you want to go to this big event? It's like it's a symphony here. Um, and it was a closed country music awards. It's in October. I don't know which, which one it is, but everyone's there. Okay. Everyone in the industry is there. And it was, it was about a month after the terrible accident in uh, Las Vegas. So I'm walking around somewhat clueless because I, I didn't have a seat and I was just to stand in the back. And I run into you and you like hug me and I'm, I'm like so excited. So I get back to the hotel and I call my wife and she said, what'd you do? I said, well, I, I heard, I mean, Darius Rucker and Jason Aldean and Carrie Underwood and Brad Paisley and Taylor. So, I mean, everyone was there. She said, well, did you meet any of them? I said, I met Bobby Bones. <laughs> and she said, Who's Bobby Bones? Exactly. <laughs> That's what everybody says. I remember that. I was like, I remember coming up to you and going, oh, my God, Paul Feinbaum, I'm your biggest fan. That's what I said. I remember it. And so and I gave you a big old hug, and I was like, I don't know if he knows who I am, but that was a, that was a cool moment for but me. I was thrilled. Um, but anyway, and I'm thrilled again. And by the way, uh, this was infinitely better than the first time. Well, I hope so. It can't get much worse. No, this was. And I've been holding that in my heart. And I also can admit defeat. And I went, I told, when I said I wanted to be on the show, I was like, is there any way they'll let me on? And they said, yeah. I said, but I didn't do good last time. No. And they were like, yeah, don't worry about it. You're ready to get second shot. And I said, okay. So thank you for welcome. Did I do okay? Like, grade me you out here. You are unbelievable. No, grade me out no. here. If 10 is, is, is uh, Darius, right? 10's Darius. He comes on. He's funny. He's Mr. Captivating. I mean, I, I am, I'm incredibly prejudiced because I'm one of your biggest fans. I think it was a 10. It was a 10. It was Look a at 10. This. I'm the only one clapping, but I'll take it. I always Woo! feel that way about those moments where the walk-ons are given scholarships, but it's not always a situation where it's just an attaboy for somebody who works really hard. Sometimes you get the Hollywood ending. The walk-on ends up becoming the star. And so it was for a player at Arkansas from no scholarship to having his number 77 retired. Even more, Tom Rinaldi tells us, a quarter century later, Brandon Burlesworth connects to everyone who's ever been told, you're not good enough. Well, man, I want to be the first person to tell you that you want a scholarship. Surprise presentations. And in front of his parents, grandfather, you're on scholarship. Team celebrations. Girls go! Roaring ovations. Those stirring moments and rousing stories of a walk-on going on scholarship. You're on full scholarship. Yeah! But there's one story every walk-on should really know. It's the story of the underdog. 
because everybody in some aspect of their life thinks that they're the walk-on. Growing up in Arkansas, Brandon Burlesworth's desire to play football was clear. His talent wasn't. Wasn't a whole lot of athletic ability. Not, not a great athlete. He was slow, uh, you know, he was soft. We didn't think he'd ever play. As a heavy, slow lineman at Harrison High School, Burlesworth barely played as a sophomore. He didn't start till he was a junior. As a senior, even after working himself into an all-state player, college programs weren't overly interested. How many offers did he have? He had uh, two, Division Two at the time, both. He says, I want to be a Razorback, and I'm going to be a Razorback. He said, if I have to walk on, that's what I want to do. He arrived in Fayetteville in 1994, a 6'3 walk-on, and the wrong kind of big. It was just fat. Okay, it, there was no muscle. He went to the weight room. He was red-shirted. Made him lose down to about 260. After that, he just took off. Hey, boom. There you go. After adding more than 50 pounds of muscle, working his way up the depth chart to earn playing time, before his sophomore season, Burlesworth told his family the news. He had done everything they'd asked of him and more. They put him on scholarship. He was better than some of the players that we had on scholarship. He was contributing. He earned it. That's a kind of a degrading word, walk on, because it meant that he wasn't good enough. He walked on to show them that he was good enough. With his signature glasses and heaping shoulder pads, Burlesworth's ascent began. Razorback starter as a sophomore, all SEC as a junior, and as a senior on a top 20 Arkansas team in 1998, All-American. Did I ever think he would be the kind of football player he was at Arkansas? Not till I knew the man. After running a 4.8840 in the combine, five years after he walked on at Arkansas, the NFL called his name. Pick 63 of Indianapolis takes Brandon Burlesworth, the guard from Arkansas. He was a first round player in our estimation. Offensive linemen generally tend to fall through the draft. We're happy to have him. It's been a, a big transition, you know, there's a lot of new parts of the new offense, you know, you gotta learn. It's been a real learning process, but uh, I think I'm catching on more as the each day goes by. 11 days after the draft, Burlesworth was driving back home from Fayetteville to Harrison along Route 412 to pick up his mother and take her to church. He was late. And I seen the policeman pull up and Brandon wasn't home yet. I remember running out and saying, Brandon, Brandon, and them just shaking their head. The Brandon Burlesworth story was unfolding like a fairy tale. But yesterday afternoon, Burlesworth died in an auto accident. Police say Burlesworth's Subaru crossed the center line and was hit by a semi. Brandon Burlesworth was 20 minutes from home. He was 22 years old. It was just, uh, just seemed uh, unfair. For a guy to do everything he had done the hard way and made it to the highest level, and then you don't get to play. Since 2010, the Burlesworth Trophy has been awarded to the nation's most outstanding college football player who started his career as a walk on. You know the winners. The winner of the 2018 Burlesworth Trophy, Hunter Renfro. And they know the story of a walk-on who lives on. Every year at the ceremony, it's just cool because I hear Brandon's story over and over again. That 
that same determination, that same work ethic, and they won't take no for an answer. That's the world's way, earning it. Tom Rinaldi with that story. The Burlesworth Foundation, among its initiatives, they provide eyeglasses and eye exams to underprivileged children in tribute to Brandon's signature look of wearing those glasses, and they continue their wonderful work. It's really inspirational to walk on as we continue to see these stories. Arkansas wins the toss, they defer, so Portland State will get the football first out of Portland, Oregon, under the direction of Bruce Barnum. This is a team that in 2015, in Coach Barnum's first year, had a couple of big wins against FBS teams, including Washington State, but fell on hard times in 2017. They went 0-11, rebounded to pick up four wins last year, but he feels really good about this group in terms of having some experience coming back. And a fair catch call for at the seven-yard line by Holtz. He will stand to the right of Davis Alexander. Again, Alexander will run it. So second down coming up for the Vikings. Look right, trying to throw left. Pressure comes, and 
Dorian Gerald got there in a hurry, and Davis Alexander hit the deck. Trying to set up the screen to his left side, and you see the pressure come right off that other side, and Dorian just does a great job of releasing and coming through and not worrying about the football. Brings up a big, big play here on second down. Pressure comes on a corner blitz. Alexander has time, but it's batted in the air, and it's incomplete. It'll be fourth down. And the sophomore, Cody Williams, who last year hit a 52-yarder. And he makes it by a couple of yards. At Arkansas, third down and longs were a disaster for the Hogs a year ago. They will complete this one here. The pass is caught by the freshman, Traylon Burks, and get used to that name and that number. The freshman out of Ward, Arkansas, a four-star recruit, gets it in the action early. The thing to watch is watch the movement inside the pocket. He never panics. He never gets out of control, and he continues to keep his eyes downfield and complete a big third down play there. They're, they're first series making positive plays. Here's Boyd off the right side, breaks a couple of tackles, running hard for the 40-yard line. 19 out of 24 a year ago, the left footer. Will hammer that one through the uprights. What a job by this staff to go and lock up some of the most talented players in the country as Boyd picks up the first down to midfield. Hicks to throw. Long throw, that one. Caught on the sideline. They're going to say catch is made inside the 35 at the 34. What a catch by Tyson Morris. Watch this route by Tyson Morris. The seven route, a corner route in cover two, throwing it right in between the corner and the safety. And look at him getting one foot down. Great concentration at the end of that play to get that left foot down. Last year, that was 113th in the country. Last in the SEC. A lot of room to run. Warren inside the 15. Quick throw and catch. Grayson Gunner. Don't work out of that shotgun. Hand off to Whaley. Dives for the end zone. Does he get in? Yes, he does. Comes some corner pressure and then some pressure right up the middle. Somebody missed an assignment. Now Alexander just has to run for his life. Toss sweep. Hoffman. Boy, there's some of that Arkansas speed. Monteric Brown. They call him Busta Brown, and he just busted up Hoffman on the sideline. Ran my mind right there, Dave. Both the round. The, the best part about this is, yes, he's trying to get, get blocked on the edge, but he keeps containment, and then he attacks the edge and puts a licking on Sergio Hoffman there on the sideline. So from the far hash, good clean snap. Kick is on the way. He hits it again. Hard run by Boyd. There's a big collision around the 28. He'll pick up four. One of the problems for Portland State, they sent him the patches, but they didn't send enough for the coaches. <laughs> Couldn't wear the patches today. Boy, Evan Holtz hit after he picks up about a, a yard and a half. Bumper pool met him in the hole. And Mouse Davis as Alexander was the creator of the run and shoot offense. Certainly everybody in college football has some kind of variation of that. State University football, you're in for a sports treat. Our approach was we're gonna pass first. And you spread people out, you open the holes so that you can get the maximum space for your receiver to win. And then score, score, Score and score some more, <laughs> and then score some more. The run and shoot offense under Mouse Davis, boy, it has morphed into something different. But it's everybody still uses some vari variation of that today. Alexander trying to pick up a first down here. There's no run and shoot here. It's just run. 
first down and 10 as the penalty is enforced. But Curl gets to stay in the game. Alexander doing what he has done for the most part of the first half, and that is run for his life. And there is Curl making the play. Play clock down to two. Dorian Gerald there to wrap up Evan Holtz. Somebody lost a helmet in the process, but it'll be fourth down coming up. It was after that that Nick Starkle decided to come. You know, usually these guys looking for immediate opportunities to play. Chase Harrell with the reception there in the first down. You don't see that too often. I mean, it makes the whole entire team better. They'll delay handoff. Nice run there from Devla Whaley. Two tight end look on fourth down. Hicks will keep it. He'll have the first down and more. He has tackled first and ten for the Vikings. And off to the right side, Carlos Martin. Nowhere to go, a loss of two on the play. Hey, it was not fun. Alexander threw it right into the hands of Cameron Curl. He's to the 30, to the 20, and out of bounds. Yeah, but you see Cameron Curl sitting right in the middle of the field. He's going to go back to the middle, but he's just going to read the eyes of David Alexander when he drops back. And a great job on the outside. He's going through the progressions and not sure if he even saw Cameron Curl in the middle of the field. And he makes a pay. And now Arkansas with a huge, huge opportunity here to put more points on the board as we see a new quarterback in the ball game and Nick Stark. The pressure batted in the air. It'll fall to the turf. Joe Boucher came flying in there. Batted it away from Davis Alexander. Fouché's coming right here off the edge. And when you can't get there, they always talk, get your hands up. And that's a good play by... First down, excuse me, third down and 10. Alexander scrambling and loses his helmet. So now he's got to come off the field. On a first down and 10 from the 35. Over the middle, as a man, Trey Knox inside the 30. This route right here. Come up, stems him outside, and gives him that outside release. And good job of holding him up down the middle of that scene by Nick Starkle. A surprising score, to say the least, here in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Hogs only up by four after two quarters of football. Here in Fayetteville, Arkansas, Reynolds Razorback Stadium. Boy, Alexander's finally dropped. Fresh set of downs for the Vikings. Boy, swarmed by four Arkansas players. So they had a couple of opportunities late in the fourth quarter to have some third down stops and couldn't get off the field. Here's Rakeem Boyd, takes a simple pass and turns it into a 12-yard gain. It's just shocking. Wow. And this is kind of shocking as well that Portland State's only down four, but an unbelievable pick by McClellan. Coverage on the outside. Davis Alexander just throws his ball too far inside. He has a step on McClellan. He just throws it too far inside. And you see him. He's able to get back into the play and make the interception. Arkansas three out of ten on third downs. These are the situations that destroyed them offensively last year. That's floated in the air, but it is caught around the 45-yard line by Mike Woods. Whaley stays in the game as Arkansas is out of that pistol formation. Hicks will dump it off to Woods. Nice move by Mike, and then he is knocked out of bounds right at the line to gain at the 45-yard line. Watch the tail end of this play. Expect to see this later on. <laughs> Top 10 for sure, making the guy miss. Put that left foot in the ground. That's maybe that, that's a little R1 button right like there. Here's Rakeem Boyd. 
Has some room down to the five yard line. Here's Boyd diving for the end zone and he will have six for the Razorbacks. It's only fitting. Look at you come around and you kick out the last defender and Rakeem Boyd is always asked to make one guy miss. Great job of finishing that run and it's only Alexander will be dropped. Second down and 10. They'll go with Warren around the edge. He is hit around the 44 yard line. Boy, all day to throw for Hicks. Goes back to the wide side of the field. The pass is caught by Traylon Burks. So Connor limpered on. He's already hit from 34. This one from 25, and he will knock it through the uprights. They hope he is back and ready to play next week. Nowhere to run for Eason, and he is dropped back at the 33-yard line. So fourth down again. Arkansas bringing the house. Eason nowhere to go. Throws on the run, and that one is caught. Touchdown, Portland State. Talapayow. Here's Boyd. Comes near side. Rakeem Boyd hurdles the man out of bounds. He'll have the first down at the 40-yard line. Good clean snap, four-man rush. Eason throws deep down the middle, and that is picked off. Joe Fouché, and he is tackled around the 39-yard line. Had great protection, had time to find him on an end cut right there. And Kelly unable to come down with an inaccurate pass, and deflections over the middle usually are interceptions. And Arkansas will sneak out of here with a win. Nick Stark will play a couple of possessions, four or five for 48 yards. Boyd, 114 yards on the ground. Arkansas wasn't pretty, but they do pick up the win, 20 to 13 over Portland State. It's time for us now to get you out to Baton Rouge. Mike Cousins, Kirk Force, and Edward Ashoff as Georgia Southern and LSU come your way on an SEC Saturday night. Chad Morris's Razorbacks trying to build on something positive as well after just a two-win season a year ago. Opening against Portland State at home, Ben Hicks, former SMU Mustang, who played for Morris there, got the start. Touchdown Razorbacks, Monteric Brown at 7-0. And then Nick Starkle in the game in the second and a big red zone interception. Arkansas went up and down the field in the first half. They just made mistakes at critical times there. The red zone interception and right before the half, mismanagement of timeouts and they don't even get a field goal try off. Davis Alexander picked off. Jarquez McClellan, big turnover for the Razorbacks. Ensuing possession, they make them pay because Raheem Boyd gonna plow into the end zone. Arkansas goes up 17-6. Into the fourth quarter, Davis Alexander out with an injury. Jelani Easton in the game. And Easton eventually chased, throws, picked off. Oh, no. <laughs> that should have been picked off. off. No. That was an incredible play. But eventually, I might have jumped the gun. That mm. could have actually been the fourth pick on the day. You're exactly you know, right. They had three. Because they had three, and there it is right there. Arkansas defense looked pretty good. I will tell you what, they were light years better than last year. Six sacks, three picks, very productive.